From my bank, they said I maxed that bitch again. Hide a basement one morning, we hear a horrible creature chewing the wood from the support beams of the house. Oh, perfect too. Suddenly, the creature heard mysterious footsteps heading towards him. The creature ducked behind all the ducks of the building and disappeared into the dark. The two mysterious builders walked up to the mysterious wall looking at the supports. As he looked through the support, he noticed that there was a giant bite mark hole with slimy drool all over it. As he scanned it with a mysterious looking item he pulled out from his belt, it told it it was actually 50% slime and 50% drool and some kind of acid. As he looked at it, the other one pulled out some other bits and bobs like tools, hammers and even nails and a mysterious looking vacuum cleaner. The two of them grabbed the vacuum cleaner and sucked off the slime consistency to get rid of it. But as they were doing it, the mysterious creature slowly lurked behind the box. And then, as our heroes were cleaning up, mysteriously, the power went out. What happened? The power must have gone out. This darn thing keeps breaking. We should really get this thing fixed. Well, I haven't got the budget to fix it. This thing costs a hundred pounds. Look, if we just get the budget, we'll... <laughs> but before his friend even answered, he disappeared. Look, I'm sorry. It was an accident. You're right, Mac. But as he looked behind the box, he saw his friend completely covered in the, in the acid. Or whatever. Slightly burned and bruised and slightly bit. He said in a very weak voice, Go the hell! And then passed out. Our hero friend pulled out from his belt a mysterious looking thing with a button on it, with a picture of a sword on the front. He slammed the thing and shouted, Code Red, we have a mysterious creature in here! Please, somebody, call the house warriors! Before he was about to say what it was, the creature jumped on him and wrestled him to the ground. And all you heard was his final words of... Ah! As the creature ripped into him, suddenly an alarm went off as a mysterious little hand turned it off. As the sound of a little yawn came out from under a little bed made out of bits and bobs, we see a man getting out from the bed and heading towards a cupboard made out of another box with toothpicks and other bits and bobs as handles. He opens it revealing some mysterious gear made out of sticky tape and other bits and bobs stuck together. He puts them on and dresses up what seems to be a gladiator-like man. His name is Sticky Tape Gladiator. He lives in a shoebox in the garage somewhere in this old house that had just been sold. As our little friend walked across, he suddenly passed an old looking art box that had been sitting there for a while. Inside was a little man dressed up in armour. His name was the pencil and if you didn't guess from his name, his armour was made out of wood, his sword was made out of a carved and sharpened piece number two pencil his armour, or shield to be precise, was made out of recycled pieces of lead and other hard plastic to make it tough enough to sustain damage. Then arrived an old dusty couch that sat in the corner of a room just upstairs over the garage. 
But when they went behind it, you could see something very extraordinary. Inside, or behind the sofa, was a whole lab made out of old parts, and I mean really old parts, to something you would probably see in the 80s or 60s if you look up history. And amongst it were all sorts of lab assistants and stuff. And amongst of them was 60, the most genius scientist ever in the history of House Warriors. He is the oldest and wisest scientist in all of House Warrior kind. And I mean old. His birthday is actually on the same day when the wheel was invented, which was a really long time ago. The House Warriors call him in the community an immortality psychic as in somebody that knows when something's going to happen in the future and he can live it, live all the way up to the day when the thing is invented. So, in other words, he can actually see when the hovering cars are invented before they're even existing. He knows when it's going to happen and who's going to invent it and stuff. But sadly, he refuses to tell any information about the future. Because if he does, he'll change the course of history forever. Beg my pardon, said Sixty, taking off a pair of weird-looking Victorian glasses. He took them off and said this. What are you doing here? Well, we thought maybe we should ask you when are the new owners of the house going to move in. Yes, indeed, it is great to see some noble friends from beyond the greatness of my friend, said Sir Pencil, who was still t speaking in Old English, in a way. He did learn a little bit of oh, modern-day English, but he still doesn't get it. It is a noble thing to do, and a noble thing to be polite. Yes, indeed, said Sixty, as he dusted himself from dust and other mysterious bits that keep falling on him. Anyway, it would be nice to get some new tech from them because I'm sick and tired of using all these old parts. Well, except this flash drive. I'm not letting go of this bad boy from the 60s. Was it from the 80s? I can never remember. Said 60. Suddenly, as they were about to say some other stuff, an alarm came up revealing a picture on a wrist communicator that 60 made on free watches they were free wearing. Oh crumbs, looks like we have a mission to do. And so, that's what they did. As a voice appeared on the radio, a voice of a very strong American man came up and the voice said this. Good to see you, 60. I would tell you that this stupid wristwatch keeps getting covered in mud. Well, it's not my fault that your technology is used for mud clearing or whatever. No offense to you guys. Yeah, that's to say that we more warriors are a little bit messy, he said as he dusted a whole pile of dust off him. <coughs> anyway, I'm here to tell you one thing and one thing only. Two of my best employees went down into your basement try and figure out why the supports of the place were falling down. Really? I haven't noticed. <laughs> That's because the entire drawer or whatever that was found at the scene of the crime, we got on a computer, apparently, is actually so corrosive, it melted through the wood. It only takes a few minutes or a while or so to get the wood to melt. In about two seconds or so, a piece of wood will probably crack and then the whole house will start leaning in a few minutes or so. So, any chance you can figure out who or what is causing these beams to break? As the wrist communicator died off and we didn't hear any more voices from the foreman, Sir Pencil said this, I propose that we should go on this quest to save yonder house from yonder disaster, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I think it is time for me to stretch this uh, hoverboard flash drive and get this old wick thing moving again. So, let's do this boys. Let's make sure that this house is 100% safe. And find out who or what is causing all this trouble. But as our heroes were about to leave, the sound of wood breaking appeared outside from the sofa. 
our heroes appeared from behind the sofa and saw a giant hole leading to the basement. And whatever came out of it was standing right behind it. It was a large, hairy, caveman-like barbarian. The thing just stood there. Holding in one of its hands was a giant bony axe. The thing wore a hat that was shaped like a rat's head, and he wore a cloth around his body like a caveman. The thing looked at them with its big, angry red eyes, and then it said in a deep voice, Where am I? Who you be? Uh, Stickative Gladiator went up to it and said, Um, we're from the surface. You're on the surface, my friend. My name is Stickative Gladiator. This is a pencil. It is a great honor to meet you, my friend. And this is Sixty. Sixty, you've been around for quite some time. Have you ever met this guy? Nah, I do not recall his face. Or not, sadly. But, it's nice to meet you. What's your name again? Me, Rat King, from the Pest Tribe. Do you know what that means? No, not really. Me heard it from somebody who wore a creepy jacket once, with big bag of smelly gas. What are you doing on the surface? Me want to stop guy who's destroying house. House will fall and everyone will get hurt on surface. Me want to help. Hey, I think this friend here wants to help. So, how do we even get to the basement? The door is locked and I think the owner's left the key somewhere. I think the key has been disappeared for a long time. We go down hole. Wait, what? Says Sticky Big Gladiator as Rakin grabbed him by his loincloth and dragged him into the hole. You follow me Shall we go, my friend? Tis a great and noble thing. Reminds me of the day when we fought the rats of 805. <laughs> if only I knew that the plague actually existed back then, we could have saved everyone. Yeah, good thing too I never told you. What? Nothing? Our heroes entered the basement. Our heroes landed on top of a piece of wood that was holding up the only support beams that had not been attacked. Our heroes to head towards the support beam on the other end of the plank. When our heroes arrived, they saw the mysterious creature chewing through the wood. Sixty pulled out a torch and shone the light at him. The thing squealed as it turned round, revealing that he was an exact version of Rat King, except he was wearing armor made out of recycled bugs and other gross stuff. In his teeth was a hundred pieces of toothpicks and other gross stuff. As he drooled slightly, the drool landed on the floor and caused a little hole to appear. <gasps> that's the maniac that's been chewing the wood? What kind of an idiot would even chew a piece of wood? Sir Pencil even backed up in the horror. The thing got up scowled at all of them, and then saw Rat King. What are you doing here? He said in a very grumpy voice. Do you know this guy? Said Sticky Tick Gladiator. He is my arch enemy. He will do anything to destroy us. We must destroy him, said Rat King, as he pulled his axe out from its holster on his back. But then, Woodlouse pulled his hat off his head and then put it on his wrist. The thing clipped onto it, and he pulled one of the antennae. Out popped a long, long piece of metal shaped like a finger. It looked, a, it looked like a sword, but then some chains appeared, revealing it was a chainsaw! Racking threw his axe directly at Woodlouse. Woodlouse ducked. The axe suddenly smacked right in the middle of the wooden post that was holding the house up. The post rocked side to side as the wood they were standing on between the posts began to slowly slip. Our heroes all realized that if they don't get off the post, they'll fall to the ground. 
which to their height was pretty high. Woodlouse said in a very horrible voice, You ain't going nowhere! Me gonna destroy you! With this! He said, holding the chainsaw in his hand. As the chainsaw slowly began to get closer towards them, Rat King, full Rat King ran towards his axe, grabbed it and tossed it back at him, knocking the chainsaw out of his hand. It disappeared into the shadows. Woodlouse turned round and began charging at Rat King. We're going to do something, said Sixteen. What do we do? Um, said, said Sticky Gladiator, as he pulled out his whip and said, Hey, Woodlouse! And he smacked him directly on the face, leaving a red mark on his eye. <laughs> and then Woodlouse fell off the post into the abyss. And all you can hear was <laughs> Is he dead? No, there is one thing he's got. Suddenly, they heard the sound of what seemed to be a fly, and there was Woodlouse, flying on a pair of wings made out of bug wings. And then he sneered, sneered as he pulled out his chainsaw thingy, but then he relaunched it back into his hat, stuck it on, and then flew off into the night, smashing right through an old window never to return. What do we do now? said Sticky Tape Gladiator. He's gone! Tis a noble disaster we have created. What do we do? We don't do anything. He is finally gone. We are at peace. Huh. Guess you're right. So our heroes found the builders and brought them back to the local House Warrior Hospital where the hospital was. Our heroes returned just in the nick of time to see the builders about to start work. And our heroes all agreed that from that day forward they would work together as a team to protect the house for the new owners and make sure that no villains ever harm the house of the house warriors. And that's the story of how the house warriors met each other. Yeah, we ain't sleeping at all, yeah I'm seeing stars, yeah Gave me your number, but I I never called, I Got too faded off the way Said your name, but I forget Now you lying in my bed And I'm just stuck at one percent in my hand Ashes on my pants A message from my bank They said I maxed that bitch again Yeah, yeah It's like 45 cents, we should be good